Hey everybody, welcome to Weekly Wednesday Webcast. Today we're gonna to talk about how to master your cap table. So I wanna hit three key points today. Number one, how to optimize your equity. Number two, how to use innovation to grow your revenue. And number three, that growth equation. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So DocuSign just filed for their IPO. Now the most interesting thing about this company is actually not their financials, but their cap table. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into their cap table first. So DocuSign was founded in 2003 by a guy named Thomas Gonzer. He was the founding CEO. He ran it until about 2009, then he handed the torch off to Keith Cratch. Now Keith Cratch was the, actually one of the co-founders of Ariba, and Ariba is a very interesting company. Um, they founded it in 1996, and they actually IPO'd in 1999, so it was three short years. And if you've been hanging around the weekly Wednesday webcast, you know that the average time it takes from inception to exit is about seven years. So three years is pretty ambitious, but it was during the whole dot-com bubble and everybody was IPOing. So I would say um, it's a little bit of an inflated number. But let's go back to their cap table. So at the time of the IPO, um, Keith Crash and one other co-founder of Ariba held shares. Now Keith owned 14% of the company, whereas the other co-founder only owned 3%. So at the time of the IPO, Keith's shares were actually worth close to $850 million. Um, and of course, everybody knows what happened during the whole bubble. The, the share prices went sky high. At one point, Keith's shares were worth $5.6 billion, billion with a B, dollars. Uh, and of course, whatever comes up has to come down. We all know that the U.S. economic cycle is generally about eight years. So we generally don't see a growth cycle for longer than eight years, uh, give or take a few months. It's not exact science, but it's kind of a benchmark. So of course, the market tanked. And eventually, about 10 years later, um, SAP acquired the company, and still, um, Keith's shares were worth about $640 million. So not bad for three years' worth of work. So however you slice it, that's about a little bit over $200 million per year for three years' worth of work. Um, so let's go back to DocuSign. So at this IPO, the DocuSign IPO, the founding uh, CEO, who is um, Thomas, the, the person who founded the company, um, was 1.5%. Um, key shares were 6.3%. So why would the, um, new fountain, the new CEO have more shares than the founding CEO? So the answer lies when we look at the history of this company. So we can actually split it down the middle. We can say the first part of the company and the second part of the company's life. So in the first part of the company's life, it's 2003, Thomas Gonsner is creating this company that's gonna allow you to digitally sign your document. So People don't really do this online. It's kind of sketchy. It's 2003. We're just coming out of the 2000 dot com implosion. And people are, are a little bit um, weary of startups. So why would somebody put their confidential documents onto a startup's website? Also, how do we even know that an electronic signature is going to hold up in court? Is it legally binding or is it not legally binding? So there's lots of reasons why the first half of DocuSign's life was very challenging. So um, hats off to their founding CEO. I think he did a great job getting it started. Um, the first half of its life, it only had about $18 million in revenue. And if we fast forward to when Keith takes the torch, um, the first year he had actually $20 million in revenue. And if you look at the revenue growth, you can see it goes up 80%, almost 90%, 70%. And even the last year that they reported, it was actually up 50%. Now, their fiscal year ends uh, January 31st. So when it says 2011, it's actually uh, the year 2010, basically, give or take, a, give or take one month. So um, I went ahead and I extrapolated out what I believe their 2017 revenue actually turned out to be. Um, and I have the analysis in Founders Masterclass. If you wanna see how I get to those numbers, you can look there. Uh, but I'll just tell you now that they are still growing as a company. Um, if you're building a financial model, you actually wanna do this exercise of going out and researching companies and figuring out um, how quickly they grew because it's gonna help you figure out how quickly you should be growing so you actually have realistic numbers. Um, so back to their story. Um, as they were getting going, um, they raised about $500,000 to get going. That was their seed round. And then you can see that the amount that they raised is increasing, increasing, increasing until about the global recession, and that's when it started to tank. Um, so you can see there's a dip in the amount that they raised, and then it came back up. So there's lots of challenges in the first half of this company's life. But if we go back to the second part of its life, with when Keith is a CEO, you can see the amounts increasing, increasing, increasing. And in their last round, they were valued at $3 billion. So that is a key to why he holds a lot more of the shares than the founding CEO. So it's very important to understand that. We talked about this in Startup Law, and if you want, you can go back, go back and review that. But basically what we said was that you wanna make sure that you have uh, founder-friendly terms, and of course, you wanna have a high valuation. And how do you get a high valuation? You get a high valuation by increasing your revenue, right? It's pretty simple. 
So let's go ahead and look at how Keith has been increasing the revenue at DocuSign. So you see the first year he came in, as I mentioned, um, he made $20 million in revenue, whereas the first half of the life of the company only made about collectively about $18 million. Um, and all of a sudden you see how he's immediately going into large enterprises. He's getting a partnership with Salesforce, Oracle, Google. He's globalizing this company. He's making acquisition, acquisitions in um, Brazil and Israel and in France. Um, so he's really scaling this company in a way that's very innovative. Um, you can see he's opening up the platform to developers. And the last year you can see that he's actually opening up to payments. So now if you are using DocuSign, you can actually go onto their website and have them have a document you both signed. And there's actually a link where the person can actually pay you for whatever service that you're providing that you're getting the contract signed for. So it's really amazing. And this is really how you use innovation to grow your revenue. So thinking outside of the box, you know, the whole growth model of a DocuSign was that somebody would, first of all, um, experience it by somebody sending them an email saying, hey, sign this document, or they themselves needed a document signed, so they thought, okay, am I gonna print this up? Am I gonna look for a stamp? Am I gonna look for a scanner? Oh, hey, I can just go online and Google electronic signatures, and that's how you would find it. So you would find um, out about DocuSign because you had a problem, you needed a document signed. And so from there, you kind of understand the magic. And the magic, I personally think, is that um, you can now do payments on it. I think that's a really big part of their story and that's a big part of their growth story and why they continue to grow year over year. Um, so that is the second part of their growth equation. And the last part is just that constant engagement. Now I would say that um, the reason you would keep using DocuSign over and over is because they have all your documents. So there's templates that you can use. Um, so it almost becomes like a storage. So when we go back to the question, you know, how can we use innovation to grow our revenue? Think of ways that you can expand the use cases. So we talked about Dropbox and Box a few weeks ago. So think about what they've done, you know, so they're actually storing documents. So it's very likely that DocuSign can actually allow people to store documents with them and actually start charging for that. So you can say, okay, you have so many, your whole library of templates here, you know, you can pay a premium price. So the key to growing your revenue is to constantly be innovating what you're, what you're serving out to the customer. So you start with a one use case, one problem that you're solving, and then you keep expanding that out. And you can expand by um, going global, and you can do this by acquisition. So basically going in and, and buying the company in Israel, buying the company in Brazil, buying the company in France. Um, you can also expand by opening up to developers. So you can have people developing on your platform, so you, them using your API. So there's lots of ways that you can innovate to create more revenue. So this isn't to say that um, Thomas Gonser, the first CEO, didn't innovate because perhaps he was at the very growth stage. I'd like to break these out in two parts and say that the first half of DocuSign's life was really in the development phase and actually getting people comfortable with the product and service. And then when Keith came in, it's more of the growth stage, right? So um, this is really important to know, you know, what kind of CEO that you are. If, if you're the founding CEO, you might be the really great innovative person who can develop the technology, but are you the growth person? So you have to kind of make that decision because um, the longer you stay on, the, the longer you're limiting the growth. So we can see from this example how the uh, founding CEO was really the mastermind, the brilliant mind who created the technology, but it really was Keith who came in and actually grew the company by expanding globally, expanding with developers, um, and then actually adding more features like payments. I mean, I think payments is huge. If you are a founder of a startup, if you are a solo entrepreneur, if you're a small business um, mom, and mom and pop shop, whatever you are, Revenue is really important. I always say that revenue is the most important capital that you ever raise. So you wanna make sure that collecting your revenue is very seamless. So the fact that you can actually have a contract signed and get paid all within DocuSign is really brilliant. So think about that. And that's basically your growth equation. How do people find you? What is the magic that happens within your platform that makes people wanna keep coming back? And then what innovation that are you using to keep them using your product and service, our service over and over? So um, just to recap, um, how to master your cap table is to really optimize your equity. So you are building out a financial model, you're building out a forward-looking cap table and you're mapping these things out. So with your financial model, you can see, okay, this is how much revenue we're gonna have, these are our expenses, this is how much capital we have to raise and you can plug that into a cap table and then from there you can start to see how much you need to raise. Um, I think this is the best motivator for, for actually getting your revenue up because once you start to see how much capital you need to raise and how much it's gonna dilute your shares, it motivates you to really work harder to get more revenue in. So really mind your financial model and your cap table. Um, and the second piece of that was how to 
um, use innovation to grow your revenue. So we saw lots of examples. You know, you can do partnerships with bigger companies. You can make acquisitions in other foreign countries so you can go global quicker. Um, you can open your platform to developers. And of course, you can add more features. So think about why is somebody using your product or service and how can you enhance that? What's the next obvious step? So we already saw them go from electronic signatures to payments. I think they can go to storage. They can charge more for storage. Um, they're already doing templates. There's just lots of things that they're doing. And you can use this example and apply it to your company. What are some things that you can start doing to innovate and to increase your revenue? And last but not least, we talked about our growth equation. So our growth equation is how we how people find us, what is the magic, what happens, and how do we keep repeating that over and over and over again. So if you're not in Founders Masterclass, I'll leave a link below. Um, we go into great detail about how to find the growth equation for your company. And there's a, actually a downloadable worksheet that you can share with me if you have questions about that. Um, but either way, you can email me um, about Founders Masterclass or email me about anything on, about on Weekly Wednesday Webcast. My email is very, very simple. It's just my first name, Lily, L-I-L-I, at financeforentrepreneurs.co. Um, I, e I answer all of my emails personally. So if you email me, it's me responding to you. And so because of that, it takes me about 12 hours to get back to everybody. So um, I look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I will leave links below um, to all the things I mentioned. And if you have any questions, you can leave them as a comment and I will get back to you either via email or via comment. And I hope to see you back here next week. Bye for now.